Yo, but say yo, yo, but say yo, yo, but say yo. Welcome back to Calibria, Crystal Guardian, or Calabria, Crystal Guardian. I know there's a lot of different pronunciation that you hear on different YouTube channels about this game. And the reality of the situation is, if you listen to the tutorial mode, you will actually hear the correct pronunciation for the game, for the name, for the game. So the game actually in the tutorial mode will let you know the correct pronunciation. So for those who don't know what it is or you hear people saying it wrong, it's because they didn't listen to the tutorial. I, on the other hand, have taken the steps to actually go through the tutorial and skip it like everybody else. So I have no idea what it says neither. So just letting you know. I do know it's a story about a guy on a boat and he's looking for Tesla batteries. And he's trying to get a Tesla battery because his home state didn't have it. And he had to go fight through a whole bunch of uh, heroes to get this Tesla battery to power his ship because his ship was running out of uh, uh, cloud gas because he was using cloud gas to power the ship. But then the clouds is not there all the time. So that's what I got from the story mode from just skipping it. So if you want to know the correct name of the uh, pronunciation of the game, go ahead and listen to the story mode. Um, so just give you some new players the uh, tips and tricks and listen carefully to what I'm about to say today because this is going to give you what it is that you really need to do for this game, okay? Everybody want to go on to, let's start with tip number one. Everybody wants to go on to, uh, I'll find a pen so I can figure out how many tips I'm giving out. There we go. Write it down. So that's tip one. Everybody want to go into server, worldwide server, right? Worldwide server have issues. It has login issues. They've been trying to fix it like crazy. Please understand that this game is brand new and they got overcrowded and over flooded real quick. Most of the games that you play right now may seem stable, but the reality of the situation is they had to go through the same process nine times out of ten. Most of your games go through the same process of going through these issues to the Iron the Kings out. So be patient with the game. But if you really want to play with a smooth experience, realize look, there are other servers out there. OK, I got it. You know. Worldwide may seem that you you get to play with more people, but there's a lot of people in the Americans, there's a lot of people in Europe and there's a lot of people in the Pacific. OK, so with that being said, try the servers out. They do not have the same issues as the worldwide server. So if you're complaining about not logging in, well, you know. Common sense says that if I can't fit into a crowded car, I'm going to go ahead and take the next taxi that's free. That's you know, my two cents. I do have an account on the worldwide, and I also have an account on the American. When the worldwide goes down, I play the American. I keep one free to play and one, actually, they're both not free to play, so I'm not lying. I paid the $5 pack for the growth plan. But that's all I'm playing the game. Which brings me back to tip number two. If you are on a because of the server issue, especially worldwide, if you're on this and you're having an issue like this and you're new to the game, do not buy any pack whatsoever unless it's the two-time card pack. That is the only pack I would re recommend that you buy until the servers are buttery smooth and you know for a fact there's no issue. So save your money, go get some ice cream, sit down, and look at the load screen, okay? Or go to another server and spend your money on that one. Either or, if you're going to look at the worldwide, get the ice cream, look at the load screen. If you're going to play other servers, then you can spend your money on the other servers. But when it comes to this right here, definitely uh, the only thing you should be buying is the uh, the pack that's um, the two times pack. See, load screen. Am I getting in? I am. It's been working fine today. It was actually working fine uh, yesterday for a moment. Then it went down for like two, three hours. But we got, we got, we're not going here. So what I was talking about, the growth plan. Growth plan is, here we go, right here at the upper corner. See that right there, that gold thing that says growth plan? So when you go on the growth plan, that two-time card that's at the very top, Click on it. You're able to purchase. There's a little purchase button for five dollars. If you are going to buy, that's what you buy. I would say buy it. It is worth it. Five dollars. If you think about it, the average Nintendo, Sega, uh, PlayStation, Xbox, um, 
I don't care what you do in life. Five dollars is not that much to where you can't spend on it, and you get tremendous value out of all the games I played. This growth uh, two time card gives you tremendous, tremendous value on your investment. There's about five growth plans, so that's twenty five dollars if you decide to go that route, and you get a look at that. You get a uh, once you get to growth plan one, two on the third one. I think I'm on the third one. Or this is the fourth one? I don't know. But you get a transcendent scroll for those who play Summoner's War. You get a five star scroll for twenty dollars, and the next one gives one after this one. So this is the fourth one. Then the next one gives you another one. So for twenty five dollars, you get two five uh, five times uh, two natural five time summons. And if you look into the shop, you notice that the value of a five star summons is mm, where is the ninety nine dollar? And that's a summoning stone. Did I go past it? That's the rune sacred pack. So the sacred summons, as you can see, you for a hundred dollars you get one of those. For twenty five dollars you get two. It's a no-brainer to me. Do what you want with your cash, okay? Because at the end of the day, it is valuable either way you go. Because that uh, Calionite is not valuable. The gym is valuable. And the stamina is valuable. So out of this $99 pack, the two non-valuable thing is the Calionite. It is valuable because this game is so Calionite intensive. I mean, you could blow through that 600 just going to level 12 on one room easy just going to level 12 you just on a six star room that's all gone on a six star room that's all gone that's all i'm, I'm not really i wish it would be i wish it was more for a hundred dollars because that can't even power a uh, six star room to 12 let, let alone fit i know you're not getting 15 you can't go to uh, level 15 with a, a six star room with that there's no way possible so i wish it was definitely more on that so developers if you're listening that cali and night uh need to be boosted up to at least um, two mil. You need to be two mil, at least. Other than that, i just shown you the difference that you could get a five-star scroll for $100 off the back, or you could just go through the progress, get a whole bunch of summoning, because even if you get the five-star NAT5, five, you still got to make it a NAT6, right? And the way to make a NAT6 is to go through the growth plan. So since you're going through the growth plan anyway, that's going to give you your four stars, your three stars, more summons. You might want well to spend the $5 that way. So that's tip number two going into three, which is don't spend money on the packs just yet until the server is great. Spend money on the growth plan because no matter what, that's going to always be there. Whether the server is down or not, you can always come back, finish the mission, and that is always going to be there. Tip number uh, that was let's put it as tip number three. Tip number four is simple. Don't be a summoning a summoning guru and then get mad that you're not progressing in the game. Don't be a summoning guru and be mad that you're not progressing the game. I could give you every nat five in this game, but if you have no rooms. And you did not evolve none of your monsters. I guarantee, with a team of Nat three maxed out with runes, I can eliminate all your five star in a heartbeat. So, for those who are screaming out that, oh man, the content is hard. The content is really not that hard. I promise you, it's not that hard. What's happening is a lot of people are playing, and within four days, they want to go do the hardest floor there is. This is Catacomb, and they want to go do Catacomb ten. They don't, they, don't, they don't take the time to build a team. You know, they just throw things together and have no idea or concept of what it is that they need to do to build a team. Each monster is very valuable. Um, Rerolling, I know a lot of people are doing the rerolls to get the monsters of their dream and choice. But I would like to say this. All the monsters are valuable. And just because you're in one area of the game, doesn't mean that you need to re-roll to get that to get to try to get a particular monster because you're to me that's kind of wasting time. I did do a re-roll 
for this account, but just because I was doing a YouTube video and I wanted to start off fresh like everybody else. And it's so funny because I end up did I did have a Lynch King from the very beginning and I rerolled my Lynch King. And what I reroll from Lynch King is I got a Enchantress instead of a Lynch King. That was a bad idea on every skill because the Lynch King is a better farmer than Enchantress was. But I made it work. And Enchantress became my farmer. I didn't use the Angel of Death on this account. I used Enchantress. She became my farmer. I farmed all my monsters that you see at the level that they are right now. Enchantress was the one that actually took them through that level. So all the monsters can be used if you actually take the time to build a team. So tip number four would actually be is learn your monster. Don't go in here on four or five days, even a week, thinking that you're just going to conquer the game. If the content was so easy, this game would not hold your interest for very long and it will fail. They have to put challenges in the game. That's why you play it. That's why you summon. That's why you go farm room in order for you to enjoy yourself to make sure that the money that you do spend or do not spend is worth it because that's time. Time is worth it, okay? So as you can see, I have a team that's running uh, floor nine. Can this team run 10? Probably, I don't know. I actually spent a lot of time in um, floor seven. I, then I went to floor eight till I got comfortable. I got my time down to under a minute something for each floor before I went to the next floor. Some people might just want to jump into floor 10 the minute they can. And I'm sure I could build, based on what I have right now, a team to do floor 10. There's a lot of YouTuber videos out there that show you how to use farmable monsters to do it. I want to be efficient and effective as possible. So therefore, I'm taking the time to build teams that's going to give me a faster time. Because the faster my time is, the more rooms I can have, okay? So tip five will be... Take the time to finish the quest. Once I finish this run right here, we're going to go into the fight quest and try to get that, at least that first initial fight quest done, where you learn how to six-star your monster, you know, bring four-star monsters in and stuff like that. You're going to have to take time to level up your one-star. There's no ways around it. You're going to have to take time. In most games, one stars are not needed, not supported. People skip over them and nobody cares about one star. In this game, I'm letting you know right now, you see my best time was one minute, 22 seconds, but I think I had a rep that had a uh, dragon knight or what the dragon lady was and um, that ended up getting what it is. So my team as it is right now, it is what it is. It's consistent. I will fail once out of every three auto runs. I will fail once out of every three auto runs, but I'm okay with that. So let's I mean you get gems, you get Kalianites, and for me, I'm going to keep this rune only because I can sell it later. So let's go back into certain things that you need to know. This is your fight level up quick. Try to follow this. If you're beginning the game, follow this. I don't care what you got going on, how many summons you got, everything else of the sword, blah, blah, this, blah, blah, that. Follow this guy right here. That's the first thing you need to do. Follow this guy. Everything else pales in comparison until you go. Once you go follow this guy, this whole thing and complete this whole thing. That means that you may have to do some levels on hard until you get the runes that you have. That means that you may have to do grind for a more couple of days to try to build what it is. Make sure this is completed. And once you get this completed, you're you're on your way to doing a lot. What? That's your catacombs on level 10. No, I did seven. Evolve. Oh, that's easy. I could get that. Com did I complete that? I did that. Okay. So Magic Catacomb was very easy. 
but no, uh, that's neither here or there. So what I try to say is once you do all that right there, then you can follow this guide to help you progress. What happened is people want to jump to the game, do the hardest floor, and it makes they bump their head because they're fighting against the current instead of actually going with it to make the game easier for them. So tip four is tip five is rune. I don't know what tip you are. Tip llama. Tip llama is Form runes. Form runes. These dungeons that you have in the game, these quests, actually give you some good five-star runes if you could do it on hell. Farm the runes. In farming the runes, you get to level up your character. So now you can do a two-for-one. You do not need to be in Blackpool Hill to actually level up all your monsters. The game suggested. Every YouTuber out there tell you this what it is, but I'm going to let you know right now that the XP that you get from Blackpool Hill is the same XP that you get from uh, Covius Caves. This right here. It gives you the same XP. And I found out that they give you the same XP in the other ones too. So the question is, if you could farm it, I rather uh, a counter set to me is a little bit more valuable than a guard set, but be efficient, be effective, because at the end of the day, yes, you're not going to get as much XP when you farm, say for instance, uh, Earl Plains. But when you farm Earl Plains, you get Agile runes. So yes, your monster don't level up as much. It's about a three to four hundred. EXP difference, I think about 300 EXP difference. So therefore, is that worth leveling your monster and getting better runes at the same time so your monster could be faster? I think so. So once you could do hell on these right here, farm um, floor, one, floor two, four, and six consistently. Like on one hour of farming, you do nothing but level uh, twos. Next one, you do nothing but level fours, and then you do nothing but level six. And the reason why I say that is that you can get your speed and your, your attack and your defense to put on these other monsters. So when you start doing the ones, threes, and five, it's just to complete the set. And once you get the set completed, your monsters are going to do dungeons, okay? They are going to do dungeons. So don't stick to Blackpool Hill because the game tells you to and every YouTuber tells you to and every guy tells you to do Blackpool Hill. Be in the beginning part, be efficient and effective, and you can level up your monster while getting good runes. Okay, so uh, tip number Kappa six, maybe who knows, is um, your monsters look at their skills, uh, your your uh, your heroes look at their skills and make sure that they work together. I'm going to give you a good example. See this right here? Five star hero, right? Skill. I'm going to show you this skill right here. Call forth a magical sword which you descend from the sky and deal 505 attack and damage to target. Damage increased by 1.5 as target HP falls. After, uh, after attack turn is complete, a magic sword protects itself for one turn. If attacked, the sword absorb all damage and reflect it back to the attacker. Great skill, right? Does this make sense to put this skill and then have a monster that does a provoke? Because the monster that does a provoke is going to take all the damage and the skill goes to waste. So make sure that your team is synergized. Look through the skill and see which one does not mesh well with the other team. Just don't throw five-star heroes into place. I'm going to go to my other account. I'm going to show you one thing that I realized that could really mess a lot of people up when it comes to skill tree. So top six is make sure that your monster skills are workable. Make sure that they actually work well together because if they don't work well together, then you are wasting your time. You're really wasting your time. So, um, as you can see, I do have a couple of five stars. They're not in use. I don't even think they got runes on them. See, no runes on them. He was a four star. 
his skill read good, but once again, forcing units into a scenario, a five-star into a scenario that is not needed is pointless. I just threw some runes on her. She's about to get de-rune in a second because I'm not in favor of her. These, like for him, I think he's a three-star initially, but he does bleed. So he's a great dungeon boss uh, team for me. He works very great with it because his uh, skills ensure that he does a lot of damage based on bleed. Mr. Popo, let me show you what I'm talking about. On the side of blood, the side of blood is sight the Ripper. When attacks, an interesting chance to ignore defense based on the number of bleed effect on the target. He does bleed with his skill one. He does bleed with his skill two. Mr. Popo does bleed all the time. So if I have me a whole bleed unit and everybody goes first, the Ripper could come in and do huge damage. This is what I talk about, synchronizing your team to make sure that they work uh, efficiently and effectively. Okay? So learn your monsters. Just don't summon monsters and thinking they're trash. I've seen some videos out there where they got the Ripper in because he was like a three. They was like, eh, I don't know about him. But as you can see, if you got a whole bunch of bleed monsters out there, he is significant. I mean, he's a heavy hitter. He is a heavy hitter. OK, I'll showcase him in a video uh, in the near future. OK. All right, I'm going to switch account to go to my next tip. All right, so now we're back on my uh, American account. And um, we're going to continue where I said before, know the monsters that you have. As you can see in my other account, I have some, I'm getting only energy. I haven't got anything yet. I only um I'm getting heroes and people like, well, you have Mr. Popo, you have this, you have that. As you can see on this account, I actually what I did level up the Angel of Death because I didn't I didn't have the runes or the discipline like I had on my last account to follow the same procedure here. So this account is a catch up account. Although this is the first account I I neglected it for a while. And this became a catch-up account. This account has better monsters than the other one. It just shows you that if you don't farm runes correctly, that it doesn't matter what monsters you have, no matter how great they are and how they look, if you don't farm correctly, you're not going to get anywhere. That account could do level 9 all day long. This one struggles to do level uh, floor 8 in the dungeon because I didn't properly farm like I did the other one. You know, The other one I did floor 7 like a whole two days. And then, you know, pick my runes out and make sure that things was leveled up on this one right here. On that one, uh, the uh, all bought account, the runes that I got to level um, 15 were five and six star runes. On this one, I had to use one star runes because I didn't manage my Kalian Knight effectively. So therefore, I was behind on my growth plan. On that one, I'm already past this level when it comes to growth plan. And it's just ridiculous. Hold on one second. Okay. All right. So as you can see, this growth plan is tremendously lower than the other one. So I had to get up to 200 to get, like, I'm so far behind. So once again, um, the rule of the game is follow the growth plan and don't try to do too many things at one time. There's a lot of content in this uh, game to be done. And you can get distracted, like, so simple, you know what I'm saying? Like, squirrels just like oh my gosh look i could do this oh i could do that i could do this i could do look follow the, the simple process of leveling your monsters and runes okay so let's go back to what i was saying about heroes i have a great hero that have a great passive that says that while alive i have 70 percent chance to gain immunity against defense down Sorry, while alive, allies have 70% chance to gain immunity against defense down negative status. No defense buff may be received neither. That seems really good. But if you have a whole bunch of defensive monsters, like Mr. Popo, which is a defensive monster, 
um, Abyss Lord, which is a defensive monster, and you can't boost your attack up, then you're not going to boost your defense up, which boosts your attack up. It kind of negates what you need to do. Now, if you don't have monster that's based on defense and is pretty good to go, then by all means, learn your monster skill and just don't throw a bunch of five stars together that don't mean nothing. Oh, my goodness. The game can be easy if you take the time to do what you need to do. For instance, this Enchantress versus my Oddball Account Enchantress has no skill level up except for one. My Enchantress on the Oddball Account is max skilled on everything. My Popo is max skilled on everything. So when you're dealing with max skill, Rune 7, uh, uh, Tip 7, when you're max skilling monsters, don't max skill things because they're just five stars and they seem cool. Figure out early on what are they going to do for you immediately in order for you to get more out of the game. So once you se so select your team, I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So you see the other team was pretty boss, right? There's only like one four star that I had and everybody else was five star, right? This team, not so much. This team has to rely on a uh, good. So, for instance, I'm using. I got my dip, my damage dealer, and so here we are with three stars. I'm using Windwalker and Harpy. Why? Because I didn't do the farming I was supposed to do on the account like I'm supposed to and I'm behind and I could have complained about the fact that I'm not getting good runes and I can't clear a dungeon. Or I could take the time to actually make a team that could actually survive. Now I got to go through and then, you know, make them level uh, 40 for them to be consistent. But we're just going to go through and show you what they do. Is this team 100%? Um, 100%? It really is not, um, but the idea behind it was simple. Speed kills. So Enchantress is there because she's going to make sure we're fast. She has a skill, a skill lead to make sure that we are fast. Everybody boosts, and now that we are fast, we get a nice little um, haste to make us faster. And... We should be able to lap all the enemies to begin with. I did put hit on some of these monsters. A lot of people don't pay attention to hit. They say get in the subs. But the way the game goes, it's sometimes hard to get into the subs because you're speed chasing. So since I'm speed chasing with the subs, I kind of have to put a hit rune in there in order to get my things to uh, actually land. When it comes to these stages and the floors, the first wave hit harder than almost any other wave that you think. In most games, the first wave is trash waves. You don't worry about them, blah, 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 right? But in this game, your first wave is going to be your hardest wave. The boss comes second, and then the middle wave ain't nothing. But yeah... If you could pass the first wave, nine times out of ten, you could beat the boss. You just got to know what the boss mechanic is. The boss hit hard, got it. But with the attack break, this is where if you have a angel of death, it comes in handy. I don't have an attack break on any of these monsters right here. So I'm playing with fire. If I don't have an attack break, that means that I need to be really tanky. For the sake of speed, we're just going to take the middle boss. I like the Enchantress because she, she got a great speed to her. She does hit hard. And then when she get hit like that, she's going to go through and get all her energy back. Skill 2 right about now. Come on, skill 2. And get all her energy back. So I'm not really concerned about her. And this is what I said before. If I use that... Uh, other hero that I have that will block all my uh, defense up, 
and I will get kind of slaughtered unless I have a defense heavy team that don't rely on the Bulls. But if I have a defense team, I'm going to rely on the Bulls. So, I mean, if you have an HP team or an attack team that don't really care, then you get to go. I am going to do a, I do have a lot of damage dealers on this account that I'm going to build, like the Noctur, Noctura. I'm going to build a Noctura. I'm going to build in Campbell build a very nice damage team to take these boss down real quick. Uh, Enchantress, I said before, she gives the slow. She can't reduce their energy, but she gives the slow. I have Bleed coming from the Harpy. I have a Cleanse coming from my Droid and a Cleanse coming from my Abyss Lord or Debuff. So time for somebody to get rid of. There you go. You need to work on your timing when it comes to the work on your timing between the towers and the boss. The towers goes right before the boss attack. So if you can slow the tower down or slow the boss down to where you can go again, that's effective or efficient. You know that's immunity is not gonna work. I mean uh she was trying to clear his uh, thing is not gonna work with energy. I was gonna go right about now to put the attack on. And we oh that's the buff. That's the bleed. So now he's gonna be less than half, and this is where he's gonna hit hard. There you go. Once again, you build your team the way you build your team. He's gonna hit hard. I'm really not concerned because um, I built my Abyss Lord to be very tanky. And my Abyss Lord is going to make sure that he has enough burns to where he needs to win. So this team, for me, this is what I said before. Learn your mechanics. For instance, that Harpy, I built her fast so we can have more turn. But if I built her super tanky like I did the Abyss Lord, the Abyss Lord, then I could be putting bleeds and everything all day long without no issue, problem, or concern. So that's a team that you need to learn to build. Please build your team correctly. Uh, you know what? Anything special? Nothing. I uh, sell. So. so things you could do is you could auto farm in this game. So when you auto farm, you could actually go uh, where the sprocket is on the side of auto farm and click on what rooms that you want to keep and what you want to sell. Because I'm in the big boy territory, I'm selling all my rooms that's level four and below. As soon as I start doing floor 10, I'm selling everything that's five and below because my monsters have runes. I'm comfortable of doing it on a minute speed run and all I care for is six star runes, okay? So that's uh, tips and tricks you can use once you get advanced in the game. Hopefully that helps you out. I don't even have I even have summons to give you. I do on my other account. Um, matter of fact, hold on, let me switch over. I think I need to get myself from a, a new tablet. This tablet is really, really slow. Come on, Samsung, do better. All right, so we're back on this oddball account and um thing that you also may want to consider once you decide to get if you're kind of in the game more and you kind of a little bit more advanced is uh, definitely consider doing the um, Auto World. Auto World is located at your upper left. Upper left. Upper left at the very corner. Auto World's Try. Um, Vapor Dreamland is very awesome. I was able to get me some drops because you're going to have this thing where you exchange and this is where gems come into play so this is the last tip of the day try to keep your healthy amount of gems especially when you're doing vapor dreamland because you're going to get a, some great chances of buying some great things um they're going to tell you you could buy one for say 100 gem two for 200 gem and three for five for 400 gems and 
those things are very wonderful. You may get an opportunity that you never think you're going to get before. One of those opportunities that I got today was for 400 gems, I was able to get five lawful summons. So let's go ahead and do that and end the video. Oh, I'm way over. So keep that in mind. That, but make sure that you're doing your farming and your uh, uh, evolutions and everything of that sort ahead of time. These extra monsters, once you max out, say for instance, your harpy and stuff like that, use them as fodder. Try to uh, level up your three stars to four stars. Because as you can see, I have enough four stars to make another six star. You know what I don't have? Kalyanite to actually uh, do that. And that's what's killing me. Because the choice is, do I level or do I try to uh, ascend these monsters? I mean, I have enough now, but beforehand I didn't have enough. So my next six star is where you think of what do you want to do? I already did my uh, Demonic Swordsman and if I had to all do it all over again, I would have waited. I would have definitely waited. But he's here now, and I would just have to make a team that utilized the fact that he could boost my speed up completely. So once I farm enough of uh, crit rate runes, then he will be a lot more effective. So the Ripper will be my next six star because I want him to work with Mr. Popo to do as much bleed damage as possible for him to kill the boss. See, uh, floor 10 boss. So I'm going to switch out my uh, Arc Mage for the Ripper once I get what I need to get out of him. So let's go back to summons. As you for theory crap, look, look, this game is new to everybody. Some are more advanced than others, but you could come up with a team that's going to blow everybody out of the water. When I seen in Summoner's War, like a BJ R5 team that came out, those were using monsters that didn't even need to be leveled in it because somebody had to be creative with what they have. Be creative with what you have, okay? And I promise you, the game is going to be fun because you get to create something that everybody else gets to use instead of following everybody else's footsteps. So when you don't see me on YouTube all the time, it's because I'm trying to be creative. But before I could be creative, I need runes first. I'm not expecting anything out of this. I said before, I would like um, dupes. I'm actually short on dupes. And dupes are one of them things in most games that you don't like to have because you go, oh, I already got that. It's not a new toy. But in this game, dupes are very, very, very valuable. And a dupe is the most awesome thing ever. I don't want to do any more summons, honestly, because I want to see how much um, of these scrolls I could uh, stack up. I want to be able to do, like, say, 30 lawful scrolls without no issues and just see how it is. Uh, 50... LD scrolls. So I'm going to start saving those scrolls from now on. Oh, man, I thought I'm going to start with a five star. I almost got scared. If it's a five star, I want I want uh, a dupe. I really, really want a dupe. Alright, so we didn't get nothing this turn. The game rewards you, as I said before, for everything that you do. Voids, uh, it's just like Summoner's War. You're not going to get nothing out of it. Uh, so you might as well just save those until you do a mass summon. You might as well save those until you do mass summons. But that's it for the day. Um, hopefully those tips really help you. And, you know, to run it down, or what I said before is don't go on crowded servers. If you are going to go on crowded servers, don't buy any packs. Um, make sure that you find a synergy team that actually works well together. So where one skill make one skill better for a team. So if everybody is on bleed and a, another opponent take the advantage of 
doing more damage because everybody got bleed or everybody has dots on them, then you make that a priority because then everybody could go dot the boss up and then that guy could come through and do uh, significant damage. Um, make sure that you are actually leveling and getting runes at the same time when you're a beginner. So if you got to go back to the lower accounts just to get the runes that you have while leveling your monster, do it. Yes, it's a great XP hit and XP in this game. The XP curve in this game is very significant. I mean, it's downright hard to try to get a monster to level 40 these days, but it's worth it because then you're able to then farm the higher floors a lot easier instead of struggling on the lower floors because you could do Blackpool Hill till you're blue in the face and get all your monsters to level 40, but without the runes, you're still going to be doing floor 7 of Colossus. So... I'd rather do Agile Rune and not get the XP and get to a point where I have all my monsters fast enough, tanky enough to where they could do floor 9 and 8 at level 36, 37 versus a bunch of level 40s that can't do it. So just, just my opinion. Um, I will leave you guys with that. Happy farming. The next time you see me, as you see, I'm doing floor nine with this account. Next time you see me, I will be doing floor 10 consistently, and it will be under two minutes. So enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. I'm done with summon. I'm more focused now on building teams. So my summon videos will be limited going forward, and um, just look forward to actually building teams to actually progress in the game. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? This ain't it. Hold on one second. 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 I want to do this on camera. I want to do this on camera. Hold on. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. I'm on the Mr. Amazing account, so I want to do this on camera real quick. As you can see, my point sucks. My rank sucks. Whatever. Because... I only got one monster for defense because I'm not a try hard and I'm trying to uh, actually get points. So on camera, I'm going to actually do my first totem. I've been saving up. I can do HP for everybody, which is awesome because then they can last a lot longer. I could do attack for everybody, which is awesome because guess what? They can do more damage, but half my monsters are defensive monsters, so that mean nothing. And we all know speed kills so right on camera we got our first speed totem i thought it was gonna actually give me something but apparently they just call it a day there's no island to build and you don't customize your island so i guess one of the drawbacks of everybody looking the same right but that's all i want to do and the video has officially ended i now have a uh fast team to do things that i have no idea what i'm gonna do with so enjoy your day. I am going to be farming, farming, farming. Enjoy.